Coffee with Gaz here with Christopher Alvarez. Chris Alvarez. We'll go with Chris. I'm doing Christopher for your mom. <laughs> <laughs> I know Nancy's going to watch this. The, um, brother, thanks for coming on. I appreciate you. And I always say getting uncomfortable together, especially on uh, really just talking about on camera. Dude, I ask everybody, well, how do you drink your coffee? So in Miami, unfortunately, it's too hot. So I, I prefer iced coffee. Really? Uh, hazelnut. Uh, specifically uh, but I do all different types of coffees like cafe con leche oh, you mix it Cuban up. coffee if you ever bring American. an iced coffee around me I'm going to tell you to get it, you know, get, <laughs> get your iced coffee away from me it's 97 degrees outside <laughs> I want a margarita <laughs> 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 but um, really we've known each other for a while we hang out we're friends we've been working together for years you know, one thing I wanted to to really discuss with you is is expectations, specifically how to deal with them. You know, I me looking on the outside in, and I and I we've talked about this off camera, is how do we either deal with them, um, handle them? I know you being six eight, a larger than life personality. I know your background, kind of growing up being a superstar athlete, where everything kind of yeah, you know, the truth is, dude, things came to you, right? Naturally. Naturally talented person. I mean, how do you deal with those expectations and how they changed being in the business world? So first and foremost, thank you for having me. Um, it, it's been a huge challenge, uh, specifically once I stopped playing the game of basketball. Before that, I mean that was who I am. Like, uh, that's who I was. Like I was always Chris Alvarez, the basketball player. I was, I was, that's who I, that's who I was. I, no, no one it was knew me. The uh, identity you. A hundred percent. No, I, and I, it was a struggle after that trying to break out of it. Um, but expectations wise, I mean, I feel like it's, it's always been there my whole life. I've always stood out. I've always been the tallest person in the room for the most part. Um, and yes, things when I was growing up always did come easy uh, f for myself. So I, I, I never truly struggled um, in any part of my life, thank God, to be honest. Um, but in the business world, there's been a lot of adjusting to do. And, and I'm, still, I'm still learning. I'm still learning yeah. on how to deal with them, to be honest. Well, I, I, I don't think you ever... You're, I'm, and if you have drive like you do, like we do, like a lot, you know, and, and I'm assuming most people do, I couldn't think how to live any, any way otherwise, right? Um, is we're always going to put these expectations on ourselves. It's just how are we going to, you know, use it as a driver, as a benefit to push us? Because it, it also can hinder us as well. I mean, going back to your point, you do stand out in your room. Like you, yeah. you walk into a room and everybody's looking at you. What's that feel like? Uh, so to be honest, it, I've I've always been tall, so I've kind of been accustomed to that. It's not like I ever went through a large growth spurt, uh, like a friend of mine, Char you know Charlie Villanueva. Yeah, he he grew in one summer seven eight inches. So like, wow. yeah, it's a huge. I was always tall, so I always, I don't know. It's it's just. For, it's funny, when I was growing up, there was times that I had to ask my parents, like, are they looking at me because they're making fun of me, or are they looking at me because I'm just tall? Like, really? Yeah, because any, I mean, any restaurant you walk into, a mall you walk into, anything you walk into, people immediately start looking at you. Like it's, it, they're wondering, when you're young, they're wondering how, how old are you? Like, yeah. They're looking oh, at you like, I always, baby? Yeah, well, it was funny. It's a funny story. My mom, when I was two years old, I was three, four, and I had a, oh, man. I had a pacifier in my mouth. And my mom went to Publix, and this lady like, man, why you have this kid who's so big with a pacifier? And she's like, she's, he's two years old. Like, he's a baby. Yeah, I, for, look, <laughs> if someone, someone didn't know you, judging from the outside, like, look at that kind of, who does that, right? They're, they're going to already put judgment on your mom, you being a little kid. Like, you, like they thought you were seven years old with a pacifier. So, like, back, those are small little back, instances. Back to your question about expectations. People have... Just outside looking in, they have certain expectations of you from the way you look immediately. And it's, and like I said, in the business world, it's been a challenge for me. And I'm still in the rawest form, I guess. I'm still learning. I'm still adapting. I'm still, in that sense, I feel like I'm still a toddler. 
uh, when it comes to adjusting with, uh, with expectations. But, but tell me, like, and I would assume some of these expectations you put on yourself, is that something you've, you've almost put on you or do you feel that pressure from the outside coming in? So it's a little bit of both. Uh, for myself, I do because I'm an athlete at the end of the day and we always like challenges and we always like putting expectations on ourselves on where we want to be at in a certain different parts of our life. And then from the outside in, same thing, man. Like even sometimes my family are like, They look at me like, man, but you should be doing this. You should be doing that. Uh, my brother, who obviously is one of the business owners here, like, man, like, you should be here. You should be there. And it's like, yeah, I know. I agree. Um, but, yeah, it's like I said, it's, it's, it's a challenge. Uh, <laughs> and I'm still, you, you I'm know, still but, coping. But, well, I think knowing you, right, some of these expectations you put on yourself, I think, I think because from the outset in, people assume you have it all figured out. Again, positive is, it is what it is. You're, you're 6'8", you're a good-looking, articulate, well-spoken person, and a good person, a great person, a great heart. So when people don't know you, right, they're going to sit on the outside, they're going to say, Chris has it figured out. Chris is happy, he's got it. Chris should be, you know, the future president of the United States, um, I'm assuming. Yeah, I'm sure that's, that's, that's rough. Your mom and dad, that, that, <laughs> So those are your mom and dad's expectations. But yeah. you know what I mean? Like almost like this, this external because everyone assumes and, and, and from the outside in because no one really knows you unless you're you, right? How you think, how you tick, how you work. But you've made it look easy from the outside. I mean, some of the stuff, some of the experiences you had even growing up, like you didn't get rejected. So there, yeah. there, there might be sub, subconscious type, um, a subconscious type, man, I don't know how to say this without saying, I don't want to say anything negative but they're, they're they're just an assumption a little negativity right toward that like a little resentment as far as man chris has it easy chris has it easy you know chris yes. has got it chris has got it. you i mean it's so it's, i think it's unfair uh for those to know and and then for you to be completely honest too like it's it's hard dealing with expectations yeah so going back yes it's true when i was growing up there was people that did uh kind of like give me like little pushback like man like look at chris he he can do this he can do that like everything comes to him i i gotta go over here i gotta do this i gotta do that just to try to and it's i mean I'm, i don't know growing up like we said I, i didn't get many no's in life in any aspect in my life whether it was friendships whether it was sports whether it was school like whatever it was i was always yeah Either above average or in school, uh, got it. I, I I got through. Got it. It was nothing, but three point oh. Yeah, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like it was never really like any any hurdles that I really had to like push at that point because di things did come easy at that at that point in my life. So you I, and and we a lot of times we talk about we always talk about that the hurdles like all these success stories. Now everyone focuses on the hurdles. Like you've had your own hurdles, but but it's true. Yes. Like you're being completely honest where. Dude, I've had, I was put in a different situation. But I think because of that, now those expectations from others become almost, I don't want to use, use the word unrealistic or unobtainable because you have as much drive as anybody. And I know through conversations we've had, it's also frustrating too. Like you're figuring your way. It's unfair to, to, to assume that you got all figured out when we're all trying to figure it out. Yeah, no, I definitely do not have it figured out. And uh, it's like I said, we're still challenging. It's still a challenge in the business world um trying to figure out how to come over overcome these expectations of people and even like loved ones to be honest with you is uh, i get the the pressures from loved ones probably the, the most it's, it's, yeah and, and and i 100 it, it's unintentional but it exists right oh, yeah. it's just from growing up in the environment and i empathize with that i you know going back to expectations it's something that that i struggle with as well you know i've Growing up, and, and a lot of it's probably self-inflicted on my end. Well, not really. I mean, I, I, I've, I've, I had a conversation today with your, with your brother. We talk about this all the time. You know, for me, I, I expect to be better. I expect to be better than my parents. And only because they, they gave me so much and I have nothing to complain about that I've had to, like, flip the switch where I said, I'm going to make them proud. Like, I will be better than them. And not better in a sense. It's not, it's not monetarily. It's just... They give me in the, in the position to succeed that I had to kind of use that as fuel um, because if I don't, number one, it's how I think, right? To provide for my family and, and, and I expect to be a leader. Um, but at the end of the day, it, 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 I've had to use expectations to hold me accountable. 
Because if I didn't do that way, I would feel the stress. Like, I, I'm expected to be in a good mood all the time. Yeah, I wake up. I wake up with a smile on my face. That's no, one and, thing and, I... And I do, too. It's just... But when you go up and now you're, you know, you're not smiling, now it's, hey, what's wrong with Chris? Like, nothing's yeah, wrong. yeah. Nothing's wrong with me. I'm, we're, we're, we're actually human, <laughs> right? There, there's a, human, a humanistic component to this stuff. We're, we're going through it. Yes. Like, it's, it's, it's unrealistic to hold this, you know, to this, this standard. So, I, I mean, I, I know that I've had to kind of change the way I think to fuel it, to, to kind of navigate, you know, my way um, in a better way. And I know it's, and, and I'm still working through it. So I'm not sure going through you and, and how to get through that next hurdle. I mean, how, what do you think the next step is? At this point, I, to be honest with you, I am not sure. I am not sure how to overcome it. Um, I mean, is half of it just talking about it? Like, uh, the, like coming to group. And, and again, we're not talking about any showing any sort of. Weakness, it is what it is. Like, most people don't understand the external pressures they're putting on you. They don't. No, yeah, they don't, they half don't of it, get it. They're putting on it. Half of it you put on yourself. Yes. Like, like yeah, 100%. There, there's, there's goals that I have for myself that I, that I want to reach within the 5, 10-year mark. And then on top of that, then I have the external pressure of my loved ones because they they want to see me succeed and they're doing and i get and it you're hitting certain numbers you're 35 yeah hey, you're 30 right where you at chris yeah. family where you at 35 now the baby got a new house <laughs> 40 you should be the ceo of you know Publix. God yeah, knows yeah. What. <laughs> exactly no and it's and it's true and it, and that's exactly and it's going back to what you said is and and i'm blessed and to say that my parents have always provided me the best education, the best, uh, the best everything, the love, the care, the, and anything that I needed to, to succeed in any part of my life in the moment, in the stages that I was when I was younger, they, they provided. I mean, for those who don't know my story, I left high school from Miami my sophomore year and went to Blair Academy, which is one of the most prestigious schools in the country, in the country yeah. to go play basketball. And... It's not easy for a parent to let a 16-year-old leave your house not f for any reason besides his trying to attain his own goals. Yeah. So so you hold on to that too. Obviously you want to do it's no. almost because of that and you're such a great son like now you have that pressure where you want to make your parents proud. And by the way they're proud of you. So I mean I'm not even going to say that otherwise. Mm -hmm. But but what's the next I mean the the next step of that next level, you know, us talking because you and, and seeing you every day, like you have a tremendous work ethic. And the other day we had lunch. And you know what? It bothers me sometimes because of, again, expectations. People sometimes think they'll put you in a box. Like Chris isn't working hard enough. And the, I'm sure that drives you crazy. Yeah, yeah. But, but part of the truth is too is that you're figuring out your footing. Like going up, right? Like the being favored and having that not coming up with so many no's. Now the no's are coming a lot more often. And navigating those waters, it is difficult. It takes time. Yes. It's not natural. It's not natural to anybody. Whoever's better at no means that, you know what, they just, in this point, they could turn to a positive. They had probably a rougher, a rougher upbringing. Like, they got hit in the face probably a lot, a lot more times, a lot younger, and they had no choice. Yes, I agree with that 100%. Uh, a lot of it, too, is on in, in our end. I mean, I, for me, like, when it, in talking in insurance things, like, for me to do an app, it doesn't take me as long to do an app. Like, I'm pretty efficient at doing the things that I need to do. So just because I'm, per se, not here doing the stuff I'm in front of my computer, it's, it's just I get I do what I need to do, quoting, setting apps. And I do it within, a, like, a certain amount of time. I don't need all day to do apps yeah. or to do quotes and so on and so forth. So, yes, it is pertained to be that I'm not working hard well, because know, I'm not. <laughs> but part of the problem, too, is because when you're here, you can't hide. You're 6'8", no. <laughs> <You're six laughs> laughing, joking around with everybody. So when you're not here, they're kind of like, hey, where's Chris at? You know, no. they, so it's, it's, again, unrealistic expectations. I mean, I, for anybody, I, again, I, it, they're never going to go away. And part of the expectations and having also that drive, it's kind of a no-win situation. It's just how you deal with it better. Like how we spin it, and, and I did it in my way, you're, you're doing it in your way, and we're both still kind of evolving that, is what's going to determine really how successful we are. And not monetarily, but just yeah. how we deal with this in life.
I welcome it. I think it's a challenge. Well, to be honest with you, I, I Lewis, to I don't know if I've ever told you this, but I look up to you because um, you've come from similar background in the sense of family, very close family, very good education, athlete, and you, and personally, I feel like you have more, um, what do you, more expectation because your your family has a very successful business. Yeah. You know, and, and they only continue to grow. Right. Um, and you've always, whether you like it or not, I mean, even your uncles had successful business. So, like, your family overall has had success in the business world. And you made a decision at a younger age to say, hey, you know what? Like, I'm going to go do my own thing. I don't want to be under my family umbrella. And, I mean, look, look what Jag is now. It's It's... It's huge, and, and a huge part of that is to you and then what you bring to the table. So I believe me, I look up to you, and I and that's where these small talks definitely help me. I appreciate uh, that. I look up to things. you too, by the way. Because <laughs> you're actually a lot taller than me. <laughs> no, but I appreciate that. But, but again, I, I recognize that. Like, I'm pretty self-aware of everything that's going on. And as much as it could be in the beginning, and it still is, you know, um, some pressure, but I, 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 it motivates me. It motivates me just to, to be, you know, I, I, I don't compete, but I want to be as successful, more successful than my parents, than my family. I, it, I, it, and it's, it is from a good place. Like I, yes. I do as a challenge because they're so successful. It motivates me. No. And I use that and it kind of likes the fire. Like I want to make them proud of me. I want to do the right thing. You know, that's, that's kind of what it's all about. So I've, I've turned, I've flipped my expectations into, into that way as a driving force. No, and that's honestly that that's that's the goal. That's the goal, and it's to overcome. Like so, we don't like we said before, we don't self hinder these expectations because some people don't know how to flip the switch. Yeah. So, learning how to flip the switch is having it that drive. So, like when they say, "Oh, look at this guy being six eight tall." So, yeah, but look what he's done, and now in the business world, that's that's the expectation that I have for myself now. And you're going, dude. I'm, 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 I'm proud of you. I mean, I, I see, I see you work. I'm excited of what you're doing and where you're going. You know, now we get to document it on camera. So, <laughs> <laughs> I go back. We were talking the other day about, it. dude. Like when I, even when you played sports, social media wasn't that big, right? No, no. Dude, I remember no, no, cutting no. out like little newspaper articles. Towards the end of my college career is when like the internet was like. A little bit more boosting, but before then, it was still newspapers. Dude, and it's, it's all word of mouth. Yeah, I'm trying to build my own legend <laughs> because nobody can prove me wrong. That's awesome. So now, now, now I'm going back. <laughs> I have like one. My mom has like this one like newspaper clips, but even though you know, I could always say a dramatic story that happened. <laughs> so as, as long as I say it on camera, it'll work out. That is awesome. But no, but but um, dude, I appreciate you, man, and and expectations. I I'm here for you. I know we're here for each other. Um, I'm gonna help push you, and you're gonna help push me. And it's something that I, I'm glad you're on my team so we can help each other grow. No, uh, And thank you very much for all the, the guidance and the leadership. Not only you do for me, but for our organization. So I truly, truly appreciate you. Right, appreciate you, man. Thanks for coming on.